Hello world! In this video, we're going to take a look at how you could explore historical performance of your SQL queries on Snowflake in order to save time and money. And so without further ado, let's dive in. Before proceeding, I'd like to recommend this particular Snowflake documentation page on exploring execution times, which provides you all of the high-level look and also the queries that you could use to implement the exploration of your SQL performance. And so I'll provide you the links of this in the video description. So let's take a look. So you could actually do this by going to monitoring from Snow Sites, and then you could then apply filters to look at specific warehouses. Here, it's actually displaying data of queries from warehouses and also from the notebooks as well. So let me filter, I'll filter by warehouse, and then I'm gonna select the warehouse that I'm using. And it is called Struma Demo Apps. So please replace this with the warehouse that you're using. And then I click on apply filter, and then here I am. I'll be able to see all of the queries from the warehouse that I'm using, which is Streamlit Demo Apps. And in the duration column, I'll be able to see how long each of the queries here are taking. You can click here in order to sort the queries from this historical performance. And so let's have a look at how you could implement this in a notebook, which will allow you to do and save, you know, like granular details on how your query performance exploration should be done so that you don't have to repetitively click manually in order to obtain the results that you need. But do feel free to explore this manually first in order to get the feel of it. And then once you know what you want to explore, then you could customize the queries that we're going to provide you here uh, in this notebook. So in this Snowflake notebooks, we're going to provide you with the SQL queries that you could use to analyze your query history. And that will help you to gain insights on your performance and also on some of the bottlenecks that you could explore um, further in order to optimize the performance, which will in turn help you to save time and money. So in this tutorial, we're going to look at six queries against the account usage schema that will provide insights into the past performance of your uh, queries, which is shown in examples one through four, uh, past performance of your warehouse, example number five, and also past performance of task, example number six. All right, so let's have a look at the first query here for the queries, past performance. So the first one here, we're gonna take a list of the top longest running queries. And in order to do that, we're going to list 50 of those as specified here. And so these are the lo longest running queries in the last day. Uh, you could feel free to modify it to other time frame like weekly, monthly as well. Um, so here you want to replace the Streamlit demo apps here with the warehouse name that you're using. So here, let's run it. All right, and so this is the list of the longest queries. So you're gonna see that the execution time here is sorted from most to least. And then the particular query is right here. So this query is actually executing this particular notebook. So we're gonna skip that and you're gonna see other queries that you might have used inside your notebook, which would be from lines number two. Um, and beyond. So you're gonna see that typically it takes like 12 seconds, no more than 12 seconds uh, for the queries. And so these are the top 50. And then anything beyond 50, it will take less than 0 0.3 seconds for executing. All right, so that's the first one. Let's have a look at the second one. So, before we were taking a look at on a daily basis, on the last day to be exact, here we're gonna take a look at the execution time over the past month. 
And so for that, as always, please replace Streamlit demo apps with the name of your warehouse. And so we're going to run this here. So as already mentioned here, we're going to take a look at the execution time over the last month. So we're performing some conditionals here. We're going to group them into several categories or buckets. Uh, the first bucket would be less than one second. So queries that take less than one second would be here. Uh, queries that are taking between one second to one minute would be here. And then one minute to five minutes would be here. And then more than five minutes would be um, in the else condition. So here we're going to group it. And so here we're going to show the results. And then you can see that most of our queries are less than one second, which is to be confirmed by our results here, where the majorities are less than a second from here and beyond. And we're going to see that a few are above five minutes, right? And then between five minutes and one minute, we have a handful. And so, yeah, the result is displayed here for your convenience over the past month. So the data above here is for the past day, and this is for the past month. So feel free to modify this number so that it fits what you want to categorize into, which might be helpful for you to optimize queries that might be long running. Let's have a look at the third example here. So we're going to have a look at which are queries that are repetitively performed and long running. OK, so we're going to take the query hash uh, from the account usage query history. And then, as always, you want to replace Truma demo apps with the name of your warehouse. And we're listing the top 100. So let's run it here. So the query hash is displayed here on the first column. So it's pretty much grouping the queries according to similarities. So queries that are long running are actually performed a few times. So they are repetitively performed for four times, and they take pretty long here. Um, second one here for two times, and then for this elapsed time. And then you're going to notice that some particular queries are being run repetitively right? for 700 times, and the elapsed times total is here. So this might be useful for you in analyzing which queries are being run repetitively. And then you could optimize or maybe run it once a day or at a frequency of your choosing. OK, let's have a look at the fourth query here. Now we're going to track the average performance of a query over time. So we're going to take a particular query hash from the prior step. So let's do this. Let's say that we identify this one to be particularly interesting because it's being performed quite a lot at 738 times. And the elapsed time is 176. So let's copy this one here, 7F5C. It's the hash. Is it the same one? 7F5C. OK, just to be sure, let's see. And it ends with 347B. OK, I think it's the same one. Yep, it's the same one. Let's run it. OK, so we're going to see here. We're getting the computed daily average for the total elapsed time for all of the queries with the query hash specified here. 
so yeah, you could definitely choose other queries as well. Um, and then take the hash and then replace it here. And then you'll be able to find out additional information. In the fifth example, we're going to take a look now at the performance of the warehouse as a whole. Um, so yeah, let's run it. So an example here is that if it takes 276 seconds and that is the total time. And then if four queries were performed in a five minute interval, then the query load value would be 276 here. Um, and then divided by 300 seconds. So the warehouse load would be then 0 0.92. Okay, because out of the 300 second interval here or five minutes, it's taking about 92% of that 300 second interval because it's running for 276 out of 300 seconds. Let's compute it. Okay, so here we have all of the warehouses and then we're having a look at the computed metrics here. And so this is the particular demo apps uh, warehouse that I'm using. And on average, it's 0 0.4354 over a five minute time frame. So approximately less than half of the duration of five minutes is the load for the warehouse that I'm using. All right, let's have a look at the last one, the six query. And this is going to be for a specific task. And so here we're going to list the longest running task in the last day. Click on it. Okay. Oh, actually, I think, um, let's see, let's have a look at additional information in here. Yeah. So the default code here was actually day. Um, but then I think I modified to week. Yeah, so you you could definitely, you know, display the data in the last week as well or the last day. Yeah, so this this is for the last day which um we didn't really have, so I expanded that to the last week. So probably the time frame might be too small because um, yeah, there were no running tasks um, on the last day. So if we say the last week, then we'll have more data um, to, ha to have a look at. Um, in here, we're going to see that tasks that are running longest are the, no, the monitor task here. And then a few here are um, in the 150 second um, time frame. And these are additional information that might be helpful to you and further exploring the task. And so it should be mentioned that the queries used in this particular notebook uh, was taken from the Snowflake documentation here. So links will be provided in the notebook and also in the video description. So please do have a look here for a further deep dive into how you could explore execution time in Snowhouse and also in Snowflake notebooks as well. Thanks for watching until the end of the video. If you reached this far, please drop a cloud emoji in the comment section. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and also like the video. And until next time, happy coding.